The Everglades is dotted with small tree islands. Many of these islands started around gator holes, dug by gators with mouth, hind feet, and tail. Around these ponds, willows grow, then other trees. And after many years, an island develops from silt captured by the trees from the southerly flow of Everglades water. Birds live in the trees. Small animals make their homes on these islands. And fish abound in the waters of the gator holes. Wildlife thrives here because there is always a plentiful supply of food. When dry weather sets in, the gator hole becomes a storage pond, a place animals and birds can always turn to to find water. The gator hole at this season is absolutely essential to maintaining the chain of life. The deeper the hole, the greater the chances of preserving the life in this tiny universe. Because he is the only animal who can keep the hole free from silt, the gator is the key then to the balance of nature. The gator keeps the garfish population down. Gars are a constant threat to a favorite freshwater game fish, the bass. Garfish feed on young bass as well as other valuable fishes. Gators feed on garfish. Alligators are good, healthy eaters, but they do not destroy other animals needlessly. The gator is not a threat to man but he should always be treated warily because of his tremendous strength. Unaggressive and retiring, he will avoid contact with man if possible. But when it comes to garfish, he's got a good appetite. It is not healthy to wander in too close to an alligator's nest. The nest is made of grass, sticks, and mud. The alligator, like other reptiles, is hatched from eggs. In late spring, the female gator lays 40 to 60 eggs. The eggs are hatched by the warmth of a Florida summer and by the heat released from the decomposition of the vegetation used in building the nest. The time it takes the eggs to hatch varies widely, depending on such factors as temperature, and rainfall. The time is roughly three months, so these eggs will hatch very soon now. After the baby gator breaks open the shell, some energetic wiggling completes the hatching. The baby gators are approximately nine inches long. For several weeks after hatching, the young gators do not have to eat. During this period, they may subsist on the yolk still in their systems. The gator has a trait that is rare in a reptile. She's a good mother. She does not feed the young, but she'll continue to protect them until they're old enough to fend for themselves. They are in danger at this stage of being eaten by wading birds or by any swamp creatures larger than themselves. The young live principally on snails and on whatever else they can catch. Insects, crawfish, frogs, minnows. They are voracious feeders and will snap up just about anything that moves.
One of the enemies from whom the mother must protect the young gators is other gators. Bull gators are cannibals and must always be driven away. For the first six years of its life, the gator grows at a rate of about one foot a year. A female seldom exceeds eight feet in length. The bulls may reach ten feet or longer, if they live long enough. The alligator is now on the Department of Interior's list of endangered species. This means the alligator faces possible extinction. Why is the gator endangered? When the young gator reaches a length of four feet, he has no more natural enemies. That is, except for one, the poacher. The hide buyer is always on the lookout for good suppliers. For a good hide, he'll pay the poacher as much as $7 a foot. It is, of course, against the law to kill alligators, but this is a greedy market. A pair of alligator shoes cost $70 to $80. Alligator bags and belts bring high prices. Seven dollars a foot. So poachers slaughter gators at the rate of more than 40,000 a year. Poachers work at night. In the glare of a light, a gator's eyes will glow ruby red. Shoot down the beam and you'll get yourself a gator. poachers don't miss, and so the alligator is in danger of extinction. If he goes, the gator holes will fill with silt, and the balance of nature at the tree islands will be destroyed. If he goes, many of the birds will leave the Everglades. If he goes, the fishermen will have to look long and hard to find the largemouth bass out in the Everglades. If he goes, the whole life of the region will change drastically. If the gator could talk, he might point out to us that he has survived since the age of the dinosaurs. He's demonstrated a powerful capacity to endure and to adjust to changes in climate and environment. What he cannot overcome is slaughter. Illegal traffic in hides is destroying the alligator. The Central and Southern Florida Flood Control District and Freddie believe that it is imperative that the alligator survive. The rich and varied life of South Florida depends upon him. 
the FCD is pledged to provide a supply of good, clean water to Central and South Florida, where so many gators live. Please, let's let them live.